Hey everybody, Isaac Noble here. In our first few tutorials, we've been taking a look at shoulder mechanics, muscle activation and sensations. In this third tutorial, we're gonna be looking at the entire body as a system. We're gonna be covering something called the kinetic chain, one of the most important principles in biomechanics and something that every athlete and coach should understand. Now, when talking about the kinetic chain and its relationship to the overhead throwing motion, we're always going to be looking at how energy is generated from the lower half and how that energy is transferred through different body segments up until it reaches the arm during the overhead throwing motion or the spike in volleyball. The kinetic chain refers to a very specific and coordinated sequence that the body goes through to produce peak arm velocity. Done properly, it should be broken down into three different pieces or segments. Basically, we can look at them in three distinct phases. The hips or pelvis should rotate or move forward first. The trunk or torso should move or rotate second. And the arm, the throwing or hitting arm, should move through last. Now, during that first phase of the kinetic chain, our main objective is to get our hips or pelvis rotating or accelerating forward at the fastest rate we can. Now the muscle that's responsible for that acceleration of the hips is the gluteus maximus or glute for short. That muscle needs to be contracted heavily and forcefully to help drive that right hip if you're a right-handed thrower or hitter forward at an extremely fast rate. Now this motion is a universal one. You'll see it across many sports, including baseball, football, golf, the javelin throw, and during the swing in volleyball. And the reason you see this across all these sports is because that's the first stage in generating power or energy off of the ground. Eventually, that rotational energy that we've generated through the hips is gonna be transferred up to the trunk during phase two of the kinetic chain. Now during the second phase of the kinetic chain, we're taking the energy that's been generated from the ground and through the rotational movement of the hips and transferring it up to the torso. Now remember, the hips have already accelerated or rotated forward to a closed position. Done properly, the torso should still be open or lagging behind the hips. And what that does is that puts all of our core musculature on a pre-stretch. Remember, when muscles are pre-stretched or eccentrically loaded, they gain elastic energy. So now, when we're actually activating the left side of our body, more specifically our left oblique, if you're a right-handed player, we can now activate or rotate that torso forward even faster because those muscles are on a pre-stretch. And now for the third and final phase of the kinetic chain. This is where the last segment, which is our throwing or hitting arm, is gonna come through. So remember, our hips and our torso have already rotated forward to a closed position. If we're doing it correctly, the arm should be all the way back behind us in external rotation. That means those internal rotators are now being stretched very similarly to how our core musculature was stretched once our hips went through. As they gain elastic energy, the arm will catapult forward naturally on its own during the acceleration phase. To summarize, the kinetic chain is the most efficient and effective way the body produces force. It's broken down into three distinct segments and phases. Phase and segment number one is the rapid rotation of the hip and pelvis forward. The muscle responsible for that is the gluteus maximus. Now as those hips rotate forward to a closed position, our torso should be lagging behind, still in an open position. What that does is that puts our core musculature on a pre-stretch or eccentrically loaded. Now as we activate those obliques on the side of the body, that rapidly rotates our torso forward to a closed position. Now segment number three, or phase number three, is the rapid internal and external rotation of the shoulder joint. 
As that shoulder or arm goes back into external rotation, that places the internal rotators on a pre-stretch or eccentrically loaded. As they gain elastic energy, the arm will now catapult forward naturally. So as you can see, we've taken both the kinetic chain and the most important principle in biomechanics, torque, and used it and applied it to the human body to get a twisting force, a stretching force, and the fastest motion in the human body. And remember, it takes a lot of hard work, practice, and discipline to put these principles into motion. Done correctly, they'll significantly improve your game. Once again, my name is Isaac Newell. Thank you for your time. More videos on the way.